Hello and thank you for your interest in Metro Screenworks. Today we are going to teach you how to make and manufacture your own window screens. First of all, you're going to need the final dimension of your window screens, which includes the width, the height, and the frame thickness. Our frame thicknesses are 1 quarter, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, and 7 sixteenths, all by 3 quarters of an inch. Also, when getting your final dimensions, it is a good idea to decide on frame color and the hardware you would like as well. Some common types of hardware are springs and plunger bolts. When you first start manufacturing your screens, you're going to want to start with the screen frame. Our screen frame comes in 12 and a half foot sticks, which for a small fee can be cut down to make shipping easier. First of all, Measure to the desired length you would like to cut your screen, and mark it. You can use a variety of saws to cut your screen frame, including hacksaws and tabletop miter saws. Whichever saw you use, though, make sure it has a small toothed metal cutting blade. If you are going to be cutting a large amount of screens, or cutting screens for industrial purposes, you may want to set up a screen cutting jig which will allow you to quickly cut screens to a preset length. You need to decide which type of corner you would like. This is an inside corner. It goes in the inside of your screen frame. When using an inside corner, you're going to want to cut your screen at a 45 degree angle, also called a miter cut. The other type of corner is called an outside corner, because you can see the outside at the very corner. When measuring for outside corners, you're going to need to deduct an inch and a half from your overall measurement, and use a straight cut. After you have cut your frame, you can start thinking about which type of hardware you would like to use. Springs and plunger bolts both need to be installed before you install your screen mesh. To install plunger bolts, you're going to need a two-step high-speed drill bit which has two drill bit sizes on the same head, which can be purchased on our website. Using a hand drill or a drill press, drill from the outside of the screen towards the inside. This will make a larger hole on the outside and a smaller hole on the spline side. A plunger bolt consists of three parts, a metal rod, a plastic cap, and a spring. When installing a plunger bolt, first slide the spring over the metal rod, and slide the metal rod through the outside, the larger hole, of your screen frame. Then, place the plastic cap on top, and using pliers or a mallet, lightly tap. Then your plunger bolt is installed. Now we will show you how to assemble your screen frame, using miter cut frame, inside corners, tension springs, and pull tabs. These are the basic building blocks for your screen, tension springs, and inside corners. Take one length of your frame and attach the springs on which side you would like them on. Now, slide in one of the interior corners and reverse the process on the other side. Now, take the bottom of your frame and insert the corners into there. From there, it is a simple matter of sliding all of the pieces together. Make sure you have your tension springs on the correct side, the longest or the shortest side, for installing into your windows. Now we will repeat the process, but using outside corners. The process is the same, except when manufacturing or cutting your screen frame, you are going to want to deduct an inch and a half from your overall measurement to account for the three-quarter inch thickness of the outside corners, as seen here. Otherwise, you can assemble your screen just like you assembled your interior or inside corner frame. Now you are ready to start fabricating your screens. You will need a few specific tools. This is a roller tool. You will also need a utility knife of some sort and a tape measure in order to double check your measurements and make sure the screen doesn't bow. 
All screen frame comes with a spline channel. You're going to need to use different size splines depending on the size of your screen frame and the thickness of the screen material you are using. A typical size spline using charcoal fiberglass and our screen frame is 0 0.140. If you're using a thicker material such as pet screen, you can use a 0.135 or 0 0.130 spline. After you have selected your screen mesh and spline, you can begin screening. We're going to screen in pull tabs to use along with our tension springs. We're also using charcoal fiberglass screening material. Make sure that your screen overlaps the edges of your actual frame in all areas. When rolling, press firmly and try and get one clean movement. In order to install your pull tabs, all you have to do is roll the spline over the pull tabs. Now trim the excess screen so that you can continue working on the screen frame. After the main roll is trimmed away, you can turn your screen so you are always working on the side closest to you. A roller tool has two wheels, one straight wheel for pre-rolling and one grooved wheel to install your spline. Once again, pre-roll if necessary, and then use your grooved wheel to install your spline material. After your screen is splined in, trim off the excess spline. Now, take a screwdriver and press in the corners of your spline, if necessary. Before you move on to trimming your excess screen material, check the bow. Your frame may have a tendency to bow in if it is fabricated too tightly. Make sure it is close to your measurements so you don't have a gap when you install them. Now take your utility knife and begin cutting off the excess screen material on the edge all the way around the screen. This should be done right above the spline. Be careful though not to cut the spline or the screen material. If your screen needs a crossbar, measure to where you would like the crossbar to be and place this small crossbar clip into the spline channel. Now slide on a piece of crossbar frame onto your crossbar clip. Finally, simply roll in your spline over the clip. A similar process is used when installing spline in loop latches. Measure how far in you would like your spline in latches to go. Then merely roll in the spline and the material over the top of the loop latches. It may take a little bit of extra effort to get the spline into the channel over these loop latches. One of the easiest hardwares to install are slip-on loop latches. All you need to do is slip them on your screen frame where you would like them placed. These loop latches then fit over a screw that will screw into your window sill. The top portion of a spline-in or slip-on loop latch is called a friction hanger. It can be screwed into the side of your window sill. Then rotate your friction hanger outward. Slide in your screen and rotate your friction hanger vertical once again. Thank you so much for your interest in Metro Screenworks. For more information on any of the products in this video or to purchase any of the products in this video, please go to www.metroscreenworks.com. If you have any questions at all, or if you would like to place an order, please feel free to give us a call at our 1-800 number. Thank you again, and have a great day.